this morning, if you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, if you find your way over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I want to look at verse 16, 17, and 18 together this morning. And that's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and uh, we're going to start in verse 16. Now, uh, normally, this is, the, this is a few days before Thanksgiving, so uh, uh, normally we would have a Thanksgiving service on Wednesday night. We're not going to do that this year out of, uh, again, an abundance of caution to uh, not, not be gathered together uh, more than we, we, we have to be to try to keep everybody healthy. Uh, as we as we move closer and closer to maybe this thing coming to an end, but uh, so I wanted to talk about this this morning. I want to talk about Thanksgiving this morning, and uh, maybe you know even next Sunday we'll talk about Thanksgiving again. That way, if we if we have some that couldn't be here this Sunday and we're here next Sunday, uh, of course that'll be after Thanksgiving. But hey, uh, we know as Christians that every day, every day for the Christian heart is a day. Of Thanksgiving. You know, we don't need to set aside a day and that's the only day that we're thankful. We know that's not how we live our lives. We know that we know that because of what Christ did for us on the cross that we can be thankful every single day. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 16, it says, Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ, uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, just a few th- short verses here. And you know, look, it, it really kind of, it, it sets the tone. I think of, if we stop and we look at what's going on in our world today and in this country, how many of you would agree that we live in a thankless society? Uh, the society we live in, no matter how good things seem to be, it's like we always want some more. Well, now look, yeah, look, I'm, I'm glad I got the things I've got, but look, they should be the things that I have, and we're not very thankful for those things. The majority of our, cultural, uh, of our culture lives with an attitude of entitlement. And look, we've been seeing that more and more uh, in, these, in these last days, uh, uh, <clears throat> dealing with this virus. We feel that, <coughs> excuse me, we feel we're entitled to, to better everything, right? We're entitled to uh, better pay, better benefits. We're entitled to more stuff. We're entitled to have everything that we think that we ought to have. We feel that if we cannot afford some of these things, our, the society that we live in today says if we can't afford these things, well, hey, man, I pay taxes. I pay a lot of taxes. The government ought to, ought to pick up the check where I fall short at and I can't have some things. And our society is, is, is yelling that out at the top of their lungs. We have basically evolved into a society made up of a bunch of spoiled brats. It's what it amounts to. The majority never stops to give thanks for what they have but loudly voices their desire to have more. More and more. How much, I often thought about that, how how much is enough to say that we have enough? The bottom line is that we have enjoyed so many blessings that we have become expected upon those blessings. We're so blessed. We're so blessed that we, we, sort of, we sort of take that for, uh, for granted and we just expect that to happen. We have even begun to display the, the same attitude when it comes to God, I'm afraid. That we just take Him for granted. People don't acknowledge God anymore or give Him the credit He deserves as the creator of the universe. Okay, so that's just a few words. Creator of the universe. Have you ever stopped to think about what, what, what all does that say? That is a big mouthful and a few words. God, the creator of the universe. How big is the universe? I don't know. It's pretty big though, right? I think it probably means everything that's ever been made, everything that's been created. God created everything from nothing. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of scientists, I guess, and people in science and, and education and academia and all that, and, and you know they 
they, they would take credit really quickly for some, some, uh, some uh, invention, maybe. I would use that word rather than creation. They would like to call it a creation, but they have never taken nothing and made something. Only God could take nothing and make something, and not just something, but something wonderful and, and, and good. You know, scientists would rather believe that we evolved from, from something that slithered up out of the ocean or, or some, some monkey than to be thankful to God for creating mankind. People are no longer thankful that Christ died on the cross for their sins. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. They feel that they can save themselves. We live in a society that says, if I learn enough, if I save enough, if I, if I make enough, if I build enough, man, I can stack it up and I can make my way to heaven. They feel they can save themselves or that they can make it to heaven on their own terms. People don't give God honor and glory for their success in business. They'll tell you that, look, all that I have, look at all the things that I have, it's all because of my hard work. It's all because of the things that I have accomplished. In our text today, the Apostle Paul seems to tell us that a thankful heart shows that we are a healthy Christian. You know, when we go to the doctor, that's one thing that they're going to always do, right? I don't care if you go for an ear infection or whatever. They're going to usually listen to that heart, right? They're going to always listen to that heart. And, you know, that's one of the things that the doctor can tell about us. You know, when you're, you know your heartbeat is good. It's all, they can hear a lot of things when they listen to your chest, your heartbeat and, and all that, how strong it sounds and all. There's so much that a doctor can tell when he listens to our heart. And again, a thankful heart, a thankful heart, thanksgiving. A heart that's full of thanks is a, is a heart, is a heart that's healthy for a Christian. In fact, in verse 18, Paul writes, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So, God expects us to be thankful people. So once again, as a Christian, we are called to live counter to the culture that we live in. We're, we're, we're called to live different than the world that we live in. So, we, uh, we, with, so with the approach of, of thanksgiving, let us discover how to have a thankful heart in an unthankful world. We need to realize that we are not entitled to what we have, but understand that we are blessed by God, from God. Our blessings come from Him, the things that we have. You know, yes, yes, you have worked hard for the things you have. Uh, you know, some of it is physical labor. Yes, you know, back-breaking, hand-hurting labor. But thank God He gave us the physical strength and the health to be able to, to have those things, to, 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 to have that health and the ability to be able to work, whatever it is, whether you work with your hands or your mind, or, or whatever it is that God's blessed you with, He gave that to us. You know, despite the, the things that are going on in this world today, we have, uh, we have so much wealth in the United States that we just take for granted the simple blessings that are all around us every day. And we don't even see them as blessings hardly anymore. You know, if we stop and think about it, we'll eventually get ourselves around to that. But sometimes it takes us a little while to get ourselves worked back around to realizing that the things that we have been so blessed with are blessings from the Lord. What we consider to be poverty today far outseeds the standard of living that most people enjoy just 50 years ago, or 75 years ago, or 100 years ago. Look, so, some of y'all, I'm sure, that have grown up in rural North Carolina can appreciate that more than, uh, than a lot of people. When, if you were, when you were younger and you've grown up and you've seen how we have 
uh, how we have been so blessed and the things that that we have now. <clears throat> you know, uh, just a few years ago, uh, that was such a different story. America, Americans are fascinated by technology and gadgets. And I, I have to tell you, I'm one of those. I love gadgets. I love a little electronic stuff and all that kind of thing. We have gained more possessions for ourselves today than at any other time in history. We got all kind of this and that and and look, man, you know, battery-operated drills, I love, I love a battery-operated tool. It just tickles me. You know, that I don't have to drag out a drop cord and do all that kind of stuff. But look, we, we do, we have, we have more technology than we've ever had in any time in history. We have reached the point in history where things such as food and clothing and shelter are no longer seen as blessings, but we look at those things as our right. We think that when we sit down at the table that we should have food on that table. We think it just, it's, it's our right uh, as an American citizen that our government should make sure that we sit down at the table and there's food on the table, that we can get up in the morning and we're guaranteed that we can have a job. We've reached that point where those things aren't blessings to us anymore, but they're things that we ought to have and we should have. They're our right to have. While a great portion of the world looks at the United States and sees great wealth, we tend to view it as what we're entitled to for being Americans. If we encounter a situation that causes us to have to tighten our belts up, as we speak, y'all heard that term, tightening your belt up? If we have to tighten things up, or we have to change our standard of living. We're upset because we feel we're being denied what is rightfully ours. <coughs> Excuse me. Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Man's life does not consist in, a, in the abundance of his possessions. That comes from Luke chapter uh, 12 and verse 15. Let me read that again. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the, consist in the abundance of his possessions. The thankful heart is usually a humble heart. The thankful heart is usually humble, a heart that gladly acknowledges God. Man, sometimes you get up in the morning and it's a beautiful morning and the sun is shining and you, maybe you walk out on the front porch or you look out the window or, or you, you, some, just something. It's just something that sort of grabs your attention and you just can't help but just stop right then and right there in that very moment and just look up and say, thank you. Thank you for your many blessings. Lord, thank you for blessing me so much to, to, to be able to look up this morning and see the sunshine, to feel the warmth of the sun on my face, to know I'm surrounded by, by family and friends. You see, when we understand that God is the source of all blessings, our natural response should be gratitude. This morning, do you have a heart filled with gratitude? When you gather together, and it's going to be different. It's going to be different for a lot of us this uh, Thursday. When we gather together, we'll gather together in some way, some form or fashion. It might not be what we've always done, but we'll still have the opportunity to gather together. There'll still be food on the table, and we'll still be blessed people, blessed beyond measure. Thanksgiving allows us the opportunity to, to put everything in proper perspective. It gives us that pause. It gives us that pause on Thanksgiving Day to stop and, and, and put everything in proper perspective and to thank God for that which He has so richly blessed us with. You know, again, my prayer is that we would do that every day when we get up the minute that our brain starts realizing, hey, I'm alive today. I'm getting up. I can move. 
I'm going to go about some things today that we would be thankful for those blessings. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. For every animal, for every animal of the forest is mine, says the Lord. For every animal of the forest is mine. And the cattle on a thousand hills. That is the God that we serve. God is the owner of everything. He is the source of all that we have. And everything that we have, He has chosen to bless us with. You know, even the things in our life, sometimes it don't seem like they're blessings at that particular moment. God intends them to be for our good, for building us and strengthening us and encouraging us. And Sometimes, man, the lessons are kind of hard to learn. I know especially for hard-headed people like me. Because, man, God tries to bless me with something and I fight Him all the way on it, right? I fight Him on the way. And I, and I miss a lot of the blessing in that because I, I do push back. Instead of saying, God, help me to see what it is you want me to see in this thing that you're doing in my life. God is the owner of everything. A truly thankful heart will truly change your life. You know, a truly thankful heart, when we realize what Christ did for us on Calvary's cross, Oh, yes, it changes your life. It changes you. It changed me. Every day, every day, God is still changing me. I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. You see, it'll draw you closer to your Heavenly Father, and it will make you more conscious of His presence in your life every day, not just Thanksgiving Day. So, we'll close with be thankful, be thankful. Be joyful always. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I'm thankful today. I'm thankful for each and every one of you because you guys are a blessing from God for me and to me. And I'm thankful to have this opportunity to be with you this morning. You know, but the greatest thankfulness again is that gift of salvation that Christ gave us on Calvary's cross. This morning as I look around this room, I know that we all know, we all have people around us. They don't, they don't have that thankfulness that we have because they've never experienced God's salvation in their lives. You know, we can only really be truly thankful when we know the grace and the mercy of a loving God, of a loving Jesus. Look, when all of life just seems to be falling all to pieces, when it's all on the ground and, and hundreds of thousands of pieces and you don't even know where to start picking up the parts and pieces, we still can be thankful because of what Christ did for us on the cross because He knows where every one of those pieces in our lives belong. He knows how to pick them up. He knows how to put them back. He knows how to restore us when we have been broken. Pray for that one in your life today who doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Pray for that one. Let's don't stop. We can't stop. You know, we're facing a lot of things in this world today. But the biggest, the biggest pandemic that has ever been and ever will be is sin. And it's a separation of Christ Jesus in our lives. We need to pray for those who don't know that cure. There's a cure for that. His name is Jesus. We need to we need to pray for that cure for those who don't know it. And we know in these other things that God is working in those things too. He works in everything. 
He owns everything, and everything that we have is by his hand. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day, and Lord God, we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for our time to spend together this morning, and Lord God, we ask that you would just speak to our hearts now, and Lord, if there's just something we need to, you need to deal with us on, Lord, that we'll just, we'll freely open ourselves and up, and, and, and Lord, let you just have everything. Lord, uh, you already know everything there is to know about us. And Father, you just simply want us to acknowledge that we freely want to belong to you, every part of us, every part of our heart and our mind, everything that we are. Lord God, we want you to have and to hold. Father, we ask that you do place, Lord, a, a witness in the in the life of, of those that are lost and undone. And Lord, it needs to be not a witness of this world, but Lord God, a witness to the mercy and grace of a loving Jesus. That we could just simply tell the world what you've done for us. Lord, we could tell them of your gracious salvation. Lord, we could tell them on this Thanksgiving why we are so thankful why we can be so thankful in the face of it seems like a world that is turned upside down so Lord, we'll do let us pause and just look up and say thank you and lord god we ask these things in jesus name amen